Hello guys! <laughs> You've been so much during this year and three months to write me I miss you, please come back, where are you Viper? Etc, etc. And, and of course I couldn't be indifferent to your thousands of messages you sent me to me uh, until now. And for this reason, uh, this, is, this isn't uh, a real comeback, but uh, let's, consider, uh, let's consider it uh, like a gift for you. Because uh, your heartwarming message means a lot for me, really. And for that reason, thank you. This gift uh, is a big resume, uh, as you can see, uh, you can choose the, the minutes of the video you, you want to see according to your needs of my knowledge, from the basics to the most advanced ones. So uh, I know you, you ate uh, long introductions, so let's start immediately the video. As you know, there are three main transmissions you'll find in sim racing: front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, and four wheel drive. Front wheel drive are the easiest one to drive because they tend to understeer, so the front wheel starts losing grip first. But why understeer is considered easier than oversteer? The reason is simple: understeer is easier to recover than oversteer. If you feel the understeer, the only thing to do is to regain uh, the control of the car, is to decrease the speed. Just that. Stop. Your front wheel drive car starts oversteering, no problem. Fully push the throttle pedal and everything will be okay. Rear wheel drive cars are the hardest one, but also the most uh, enjoyable ones. Why? That's the reason. They oversteer mostly, uh, especially when you fully press the throttle. How to control the oversteer? One way to do that is to put the throttle level to 10-15% come to steer the, at the right angle and uh, hope for the best. Most of race cars like GT3 and Formula 1 cars are rear-wheel drive cars. Four-wheel drive cars are the grippy ones. And uh, for this reason, the most used ones uh, for, for rally. The particularity of four-wheel drive cars is the power could be more delivered more on the front. The car will tend to understeer more in acceleration. Fifty-fifty front rear, balanced uh, the understeer and oversteer, and uh, more on the rear, most in acceleration oversteer, but uh, not too much. If you are a beginner, go first with front wheel drive and all wheel drive cars to improve things such as racing line and braking. If you're starting to have more experience, go with real-world drive cars to improve your car control. What's the golden rule of racing in general? Yep, you won! Slow in, fast out! Mm. 
You must follow this rule like your religion, especially if you are an amateur driver uh, improving your driving skills. Why is it important to follow this rule? Because uh, you'll see it's physically impossible, impossible no matter if you're a pro or a beginner to enter fast in a corner and exit fast at the same time. So it's mandatory to enter slower to exit fast. At that point you ask me, okay Viper, but uh, are you out of context? <laughs> I mean, uh, now you should show me how to break. Well, here is the reason. If uh, you have to go slow in, you have to break earlier. So, when you see a corner, break earlier or sooner than you think. In that way, you have two positive sides. The first one is uh, you have more time to decide what you have to do before the corner. And the second uh, positive side is you can exit faster from the corner. Basically, you simplify your situation if you break earlier. So remember to repeat in your head slow in, fast out, slow in, fast out, slow in, fast out, because this rule will help you a lot to be more constant and limit your mistake. Okay, that part of the breaking was for beginners. Let's see uh, the more advanced technique for more experienced driver, the trail braking. As you know, most of the time, if you fully brake and you fully steer, what happens? You go straight. You go straight because you suffer from understeer under braking. That's because you can't ask to the front wheels to brake the car and change direction of the car at the same time at the maximum limits. You have to allow the front wheels to brake and steer. How to do that? You have to modulate the pressure on the brake pedal to allow the car to follow the either racing line. Usually you press hard to slowly release the brake pedal. In this way your car will have enough grip to follow the line. Most of the time, the apex, so the most inner point of the corner, is the point where you can stop braking and you can start accelerating, but it's always a gradual process. Every input you have is a sensitive element. For that reason, steering is something you have to touch with extreme sensitiveness. It's something I already showed with you. If you steer fast, your rear wheels will lose grip and you'll spin. If you steer gently, gradually, the rear wheels will follow the line without problem, without spinning. For that reason, prefer a clean drive, gentle, easy, and you'll see driving will be easier than you think. By the way, steering fast to intentionally lose grip isn't that wrong in some cases, because it allows you to get that light oversteer which help you to turn in better.
For the rotation, faster is the car, lower is the rotation. In fact, I don't know if you noticed that at higher speed usually you rotate less the steering wheel than lower speeds. Well, that's pretty much the same logic. If in Formula 1 cars the rotation usually is even under 360 degrees, in GT cars you can go even go to 450. On street legal cars, especially not the fastest ones, you can find higher degree rotation. Well, something I never personally understood from steering wheel makers is the continued research of the highest torque level. 10 Nm, 15, 20... I mean, do real cars and race cars are so stiff to turn? In my life I drove a lot of the ALEs without power steering and yeah, it was stiff, but not that much that obliged me to go to the gym to turn it. <laughs> In 2022 I had the luck to drive a Ferrari Portofino as well, and of course with power steering, but the steering wheel, despite the very high precision, was soft and comfortable. So I talk especially with people who own direct drive steering wheels, it's completely useless and unrealistic to put high levels of force feedback. Force feedback mustn't be an obstacle to your drive. It's just the tool which has to give you the information about the speed, grip and ground surface. When the force feedback gets stiffer, that could mean you're going fast and or the grip of your car is increasing. When the force feedback gets lighter, you have to start worrying, because uh, that means the grip is getting lower, especially during wet conditions, or eventually you're in mid-air while jumping. Like brake pedal and steering, throttle is another sensitive tool, which could be dangerous on very powerful cars, especially the rear-wheel drive ones. Remember, if you want to have a grippy car, it's never an on-off movement on the throttle, especially in acceleration while cornering. It has to be a progressive movement, 20%, 40%, 60, 80, until you reach the peak. Basically, the torsion control prevents the disaster from by cutting the power of the engine if you put too much pressure on the throttle. But if you manage to do it by yourself with the torsion control on some cars, you manage to be objectively faster in acceleration. Some cars, such as GT3 cars, are actually faster with pressure control. It depends also on the racing games you're playing on, of course. But I suggest to put the minimal traction control value as possible to avoid too much cuts of power uh, that could be detrimental on your lap times. Many people talk about it, many people love to see it, but too many don't know why is it that important to do it. Well, heel and toe technique is important to avoid this. The heel and toe technique avoid the engine braking from locking the wheels while downshifting. Simple as that. Heel toe technique is mandatory on cars with manual gearbox and it's very recommended on real wheel drive cars and four wheel drive ones 
because in this two kinds of transmission, the engine braking acts on the rear wheels. And uh, as you know, if you lock the rear wheels, you spin. On the majority of sequential transmission cars, there is the auto blip. When you downshift, the engine blips automatically on the throttle to avoid locking the wheels while downshifting. For that reason, you don't need to press the throttle. Sometimes I intentionally don't heel to, once again to improve my corner entry, especially on tight corners. Lift oft oversteer, so entering the corner oversteering, can't be applied on all kind of cars, and before you want to do it, just remember that. One, it destroys the tire if you abuse of it, and two, you increase the tire's temperature. So there, you have the risk of overheat the tires. Left foot braking is used to eliminate the time lapse in which the right foot moves between the brake pedal and the throttle. This technique is, can also be employed to control the load transfer under braking. Usually easy and mostly mandatory to do if you want to be competitive on sequential transmission cars where uh, you have just two pedals. It uh, gets harder when you have uh, three pedals, obviously, so with clutch. If you need stability under braking, it's uh, higher recommended. I'm going to tell you something that may seem stupid, and yet uh, quite hard to apply by a lot of sim racers. The race pace. Normally beginners and amateurs, but also some professional, tend to drive at their limits all the time on all the laps. Seems logical in a race, after all, because usually the fastest one wins. Well, it isn't that simple, because there is a little thing that many people don't have. Constancy. The fact is, faster you go, higher will be the probability to make a mistake. And this is a review valid for everyone. Because harder you push, harder is to control and keep the car inside of the track. And especially those who don't have enough experience, pushing to go fast could be catastrophic for his race and uh, for his car if uh, the missions are enabled. So, what's the solution? Easy, go slower! If, for example, your best lap time is 1 minute and 30, go at 1 minute 31.5 or even 1 minute 32, because that little 1.5 second more will help you to have a higher constancy. Basically, the margin you give to yourself helps a lot. When you don't feel the full control of your car and your car is giving you uh, little warnings, a little spin, a little late braking, etc., that simply means you're going too fast and your car is telling you, hey, be careful, because sooner or later you're going to kill both of us. <laughs> you know, sometimes if you aren't really experienced, it's better to do a race 1.5 or 2 seconds slower than your potential instead of pushing like an animal and risking to do a mistake of 20 or more seconds because you spoon, you went out of the track, or worse, you crashed your car. So, think about it. How to be fast? The one million dollar question that everyone wants to answer. It could be simple to understand, but obviously harder to apply. But uh, you know, when you understand the concept, which is the most important thing, then you need only the practice to apply it in the most perfect way as possible. Because that's how pro driver and aliens drive. 
they just apply the theory. And the one who applies the theory in the closest way as possible wins. First of all, visualize the car you're driving, because obviously not all the cars can be driven in the same way. What I told you previously in this video can be applied to all kinds of cars, but we divide cars in two distinct categories. The ones with the more aerodynamical grip, so helped by big downforce generated by wings and flaps, and uh, the ones with more or just mechanical grip, the grip that you get from your tires. The ones with more aerodynamical grip tend to be driven with driving style based mostly on understeer or, as I call it, with a clean driving style. In this case, you have to limitate the oversteer as you can. If you can't steer, that means you have to fix a mistake, so that means you just got a loss of time. This kind of driving style has to be applied to Formula 1 cars, GT3 prototypes, I mean, the grippy cars. The ones with more or just mechanical grip tend to be driven with a driving style based mostly on oversteer, or as they call it, drifty driving style. Nothing to do with being drilled with your opponent, of course. <laughs> but uh, be careful. When I tell you based on oversteer, I don't mean you have to drift on purpose your car to be fast. Not at all. What I mean is to drive fast. Yeah, but uh, the oversteer itself comes from the car itself when you drive it fast. When you drive on tarmac, try to limitate the oversteer. Your goal is always to maximize the grip and traction. Dirty driving style is applied mostly on old cars with low grip tires, many street legal cars which obviously don't have a lot of grip, and obviously rally cars. In any case, if you want to be fast, remember to exploit all the space of the track. Yeah, because a common mistake of a lot of drivers is to stay too much on the center of the track. Mostly the beginners and amateurs, because they think, okay, if I stay on the center of the track, there will be less possibility to keep the track. Okay, that's actually true. But if you stay too much on the center of the track, obviously you can't follow the either racing line. If you want to take the corner in the fastest way as possible, remember most of time to stay close to the border of the track. Before, in the middle, to hit the apex, obviously, and after the corners. Also, remember to use the curbs, especially the flat ones. Curbs aren't officially part of the track but uh, if you see them, use them, because they not just show you indirectly where you have to put the wheels, but they also allow you to use a larger portion of the track that will help you to take the corner even faster. Of course, avoid the yellow bananas or the red sausages, because uh, their purpose is just to make you to avoid cutting too much the track. Of course, you have to be familiar with the truck and the car. Memorize the breaking points. A simple trick to memorize the breaking points is to memorize the reference points, or mark points if you prefer. Reference points are static objects around the track that help you to calculate the breaking points. But be careful, reference points aren't breaking points. Reference points help you to calculate the breaking points. What does it mean? It means they could be few meters before, or few meters after, or, if you are lucky of course, at the same point of the breaking points. And here, it isn't a matter of skills of course, it's just a matter of memory. That's it. While using reference points, keep using the real slow in fast out. Also because don't worry if you break too early. It's better to break earlier than later because if you break uh, too early, you can recover part of the lost time on the exit, because uh, once again, if you enter the corner slower, mathematically, you should be able to exit faster. Of 
Of course, being fast isn't measured just on the lap time, it's measured also on how good you are at recovering yourself from a mistake. For example, the most classical one, the spin. What do you have to do when the car starts spinning? But uh, what happens if the car starts spinning under braking? Counter steer slightly and at the same time decrease the pressure on the brake pedal. This could result in a late braking, obviously. But uh, hey, at least you managed to avoid spinning under braking. In some cases, you can't just avoid a spin. So, the only thing you can do is to limit the consequences of your mistake. For example, here I was racing and I was trying to push a little too much to reach the leader. Here I spin on this curb and acknowledging I have no possibilities to fix my mistake because uh, at this speed it's very very hard to regain the control of the car, I look at around me and I saw the sand. I know the sand slow me down a lot and can stop my car before the chicane, so while losing the control of the car I try my best to go on the sand to break it. Result? Yeah, I spawn, okay. But uh, considering the catastrophic consequences I could have from it, I just lost two positions and uh, I got uh, any kind of damage on my car. Very few but precise rules to remember on both attack and defense. When you attack, attack only when you are close enough to your opponent. That bombs aren't forbidden, but uh, I highly discourage them, because uh, if your opponent doesn't see you from his mirror, because the bomb is considered like a surprise attack, your ball will end in a contact and in a crash. Respect the personal space of your opponent. Try to avoid long battles. Yeah, okay, battles are fun choreographing at all. But uh, they are risky and they make you lose a lot of time. So when you attack someone, try to finish the battle faster as you can. Try to prefer the inside. And if uh, you can't overtake someone before the corner and the breaking, remember that if you break earlier than your opponent, you, you can overtake him after the corner, once again by using the rules low in fast out. When you defend, avoid defending, seems strange, okay, but uh, yeah, defend less as possible, because the defense is a big big loss of time, because you move from your ideal racing line. Defend only if you see your opponent is menacing you and is getting really really close to you. Avoid zigzagging. You can move just twice while defending on straight. One time to move from your line and, if you want, another one to return to the original one. If you move more than two times, well, that's against the sportsmanship rules and you will get a penalty, at least in real life. Avoid the defending during braking because it's really, really dangerous for you and your opponent. If you move from your line during braking, at the very last moment, your opponent can't abort his attack and can't avoid you, and for this reason you both will end in a crash. So guys, yeah, Viper concept as a mouth, hard to believe but true. I know Maybe you expect more from me and from this video, but let's say I managed to put tons of information and advices in about 30 minutes, uh, right?
If you are interested, I still give my private uh, lessons since uh, 2016. Uh, I charge a very little, about 12 hour, uh, euros per hour. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, videos like, like mine help a lot, but uh, someone who drives with you and keep watching uh, at you can tell you better the mistakes you're doing and maybe you, can notice, uh, you, you can't notice these uh, mistakes alone, right? If you want, you can contact me via email here. This video is uh, the final one. Uh, during uh, the making of this video, my father, the funny guy you watched uh, in this video, if you remember, uh, died of cancer the 6th of July. And uh, for that reason, the most uh, precious uh, advice uh, of this video is to use, uh, to, to exploit uh, sim racing, uh, to pass uh, more time with your parents, uh, if you still have them, or with your siblings, or with the most important person of your life, because sim racing has the power uh, to, put, to, pe to put people together and share a really good experience. And uh, how about me? Well, things got uh, really hard, uh, but I keep fighting. Uh, I miss, uh, really, really miss making videos, but uh, really I don't have time to make them. Uh, just to make this one, I needed almost three months and uh, a lot of sacrifices for my personal life, uh, uh, my personal time uh, of uh, that I could spend with my family and my girlfriend, so I, I really can't uh, continue with YouTube. Uh, I miss you guys, but I can't return. I really want uh, to give you this final video because I got, I got uh, tons of really heartwarming messages and I couldn't really ignore them. I hope uh, you had fun since we, since me, um, with me since 2011 and uh, I hope you'll get better racing. So thank you again, goodbye and uh, remember, slow in, fast out.